This mini lesson is going to introduce pyramids. We're going to look at surface area and volume. Specifically, this mini lesson will look at the tetrahedron, which is a pyramid that has a triangular base. When we look at pyramids, specifically in this course, we're going to look at right pyramids. And we classify a right pyramid as a three-dimensional object that has triangular faces and a base that is a polygon. So that tells us that we have loads of different types of pyramids. The ones we're going to be looking at specifically in this course are going to be triangular bases, which we call tetrahedrons, square bases, rectangular bases. But we could have ones that have pentagon bases or hexagon bases. Those are also going to be pyramids. So if we look here, we have a regular tetrahedron, and that has the triangular base. A right square pyramid, which has a square base. The right pentagonal pyramid, which has a pentagon base. And we even have a rectangular pyramid, which has a rectangle base. So when we talk about the name of my pyramid, it is determined by the base of the pyramid. And you'll note that all of these sides have triangles to them. So we say that they have triangular sides, as you can see. We need to look at a couple of things of terminology, and one is that triangular faces meet at a point that we call the apex. So if this is my pyramid, my apex is this point up here. The height of the pyramid is the perpendicular distance from the apex to the center of the base. It meets at a right angle because it says it's the perpendicular distance. So, excuse me, this is our height. The slant height, sorry, there's a typo there. The slant height is the height of the triangular face. Now, that means the height on the side. And it is perpendicular to the side. This is your slant height. When the base of the right pyramid is a regular polygon, the triangular faces are congruent. So that means that whenever my base is equilateral triangle, if it is a square, if it's a regular pentagon, a regular hexagon, then all of my sides are going to be the same measures. That's going to be different from the rectangular pyramid. And so because the rectangular pyramid is one of the more difficult ones that we're going to look at, we'll leave it for another mini lesson. All right, so just to recap, our apex is the very top of our pyramid. The height, when you talk about the height, we talk about the perpendicular height to the base. All right, so that is the total height at which our pyramid would stand. The slant height is the height that you can measure along the side of the pyramid. The surface area of a right pyramid is the sum of the areas of the triangular faces and the base. So it's important to note that that includes and the base. We're going to be looking at some terminology that talks about the lateral area. The lateral area is the surface area not including the bases. So it doesn't include the bases. So it's basically the distance around, the surface area around. So you'll see those two words, and distinguishing between the two is going to be important so that you know when you're answering some of the questions. This is a net of a tetrahedron. So that means if you want, the website is here. If you want to go on there, you could cut one out. You could color it. You could have 3D objects. Right, But I want to look at that because if I look at what I'm going to do here in blue, oh, why don't I shade that so it's maybe we'll shade it in a little bit.
best I can here. All right, this is my base. And when we fold these up, we get our sides. And if you look at these triangles, this is a tetrahedron, all of these sides are congruent. They all have equal measures. So when we're looking at the surface area of a tetrahedron, we know that we can just take the area of one side of the pyramid and multiply it by four, and we have the surface area. The surface area of a triangle is half the base times the height. Now, this height that we're talking about is our slant height. Because this is the side of the pyramid that we're looking at. So the surface area of a regular tetrahedron, when we go to look at what that's going to entail, okay, we need to know the the area of the side of our triangle that we have. Okay, so we say that it is four times basically the area of our side. Now, because we have um, a regular um, tetrahedron, and if we have a side length of seven here, notice that this says it's cut in half. This is a midpoint. So technically, this is going to be a 3.5 from here to here, and this is going to be a 3.5 to there. And we don't need that information in this particular case, but it's good for us to know what this is representing. So what we're looking at is a bay, oops. What I had done there? Oh, I know I had something hidden underneath and I just wiped it out. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Okay, this length is seven. And this is my slant height. What it's going to give me is the area of one side of my pyramid. But if I know one side of the tetrahedron, I know all four sides of the tetrahedron. The three sides and the base, they're all the same. So if I'm looking at the surface area, it's going to be four times one half seven times 6.1, where the seven is the side length And the 6.1 is the slant height. So if we look at our calculators to see what we would have, I'm just going to punch this in. We would have an area of 85.4. Now this is in centimeters, so it's centimeters squared because area gives me square measures. So that's showing us how to find the surface area of a tetrahedron. If we go to look at volume, the volume of any pyramid is going to give one third the area of the base times the height. Now remember that our height is this perpendicular that's being given to us. In order to find the area of our base, we're going to need to know the slant height. Okay, so that information we will have to be provided. If it is a tetrahedron, we know that the slant height on a side is going to give me the height that I would have the, in the base. 
A regular tetrahedron has an edge length of 8 centimeters. So this value here is 8 centimeters. What is its slant height to the nearest tenth of a centimeter? Well, let's look at what we do here. We might have to look at some type of trigonometry. Well, we had just seen before that what happens here, this is cut in half, right? If my slant, if my edges and all my edges are the same, this is saying this edge is also 8. That means I can say this, that this side is 4. And if that side's 4, then I should be able to figure out this side because the 8 is the hypotenuse. Right? So hopefully you can see the triangle that I'm looking at, so this blue part. And I can actually find my slant height based on that information. So, to find my slant height, because right now I'm just looking at this part, I have an edge length of 8 centimeters, what is the slant height? It is the square of the hypotenuse, so you're used to seeing it as c squared equal to a squared plus b squared. Square of the hypotenuse equal to the sums of the squares of the other two sides. So that is telling me that 8 squared is equal to 4 squared plus b squared. So this is 64 minus 16 is equal to b squared. So 64 minus 16 gives me 48. And the square root of 48 is approximately 6.9. Okay? So when you see the equal sign of the dot, that's an approximate. So I'm rounding there. So we'll say that our slant height then is 6.9 centimeters. If the height is 12 centimeters, and what that means is if the distance from here to the base was 12 what would be the volume of the tetrahedron? Now, some of you might be saying, well, are you sure that's the number? I'm not sure. I did just stick a number in. I didn't have time to work it out, so um, don't go trying to make it to see if it works. But if I knew the height, and I'm able to calculate as we did here our slant height, we want to find the volume. So our volume is equal to one-third Half of our base times the slant height, because that's the area, right? So this would be the area of the base times the height. So how do I find that area of the base? Well, the area of the base is half of the side length, so half of the 8, times the height, which we said is 6.9. The height of my tetrahedron is 12. And this will give me the volume. Let's see. We get. And I get 110.4, and this would be a cubic measure. Right? So that means it's to the power of 3. So this is looking at how do I find the surface area of a tetrahedron and how to find the volume of a tetrahedron.